So did I hear you right? Are you shooting 60 frames per second? Yeah, I just think it's going to make it easier to show the autofocus performance. But you've shot 24 frames per second for the last decade. I like it better than this, but this will work well. Are you going to put dubstep in this video? Is there going to be speed ramping? Welcome back to Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here with another one of our little midweek short episodes. And this week we're going to be talking about eye autofocus. Now Sony has really taken this technology and they've run with it. They've got a big head start both in how well it works and how easy it is to use in their cameras. And for a while there it looked like they were having a major advantage over any other manufacturer. However, in recent times Canon has updated their eye autofocus. It works quite well and continuous. And now of course Nikon has updated their firmware for the Z6 and Z7. And that's what we are going to test today. We've got a Z7 here with the brand new 24 to 70 S 2.8 lens. We're going to play with the new eye autofocus on this camera and see how it competes. Now, when we first looked at the Nikon Z6 and Z7, we weren't blown away by the autofocus. And first off, I really do still want 3D tracking borrowed from the SLRs. I think that's a way better subject tracking implementation. Now, I do think we have to keep in mind that this is Nikon's first attempt at eye detect autofocusing. So, yeah, it is stuck to only work in auto area mode, which is basically closest subject preference focusing. But the idea is this, if something is in front of your subject, but they have a face and eyes, the camera should choose the face and eyes rather than focus on the closest subject. And this could actually help out in a lot of casual family situations. I think a lot of beginners should find this mode quite useful. And it does for the most part work quite effectively. However, like many manufacturers with early eye detect autofocusing systems, sometimes the software decides that that thing in the background is a face or this object up front is a face. Luckily, those confused situations were few and far between. And for Nikon's first outing, this is pretty impressive. There's two things that really stand out to me. So first off, the speed at which it picks up and acquires a face or the eyes is incredibly rapid. It might even be the fastest we've seen, which should just help your overall responsiveness. The second thing I was really impressed by is how well it picks up eyes, even if they're not looking at the camera. So if somebody's kind of courting their face away, Way, it still picks them up very reliably, but also in profile, it will go to the eye area, whereas normally you'd probably get focus on the cheek or the ear or something like that. So it did that very well, and that's great when you're just trying to get those candid portraits. Now, the tenacity of the focusing is pretty good. I do feel like it's still a little bit laggy. However, the Nikon does do a good job of keeping up, and it does seamlessly transition between faces and eyes, or then going to close to subject if it loses those first two. It doesn't pick up eyes at farther distances. The subject has to become fairly close to the camera before it will go to the eyes. But in practical applications at proper portrait distances, that's well within that range. You're not going to have any issues there. If you've got touch autofocus turned on, you can touch on other objects like cars or animals or something like that, and it will go to subject tracking instead of face and eye detect. And if it does see a face or eye, if you touch on a person's face, it will actually automatically instead engage face and eye detection. That's really handy. You just have to be very careful about making sure that you actually touch on the face. If the camera doesn't detect a face, it's going to do subject tracking instead. Now, if the camera does detect a person's face and then their eyes, you'll usually be able to switch between between both eyes if they're viewable. It's very easy. You get a directional prompt, you hit the joystick, and it will move to the other eye. If there's multiple faces in the shot, you can also get a similar prompt and you can move between people's faces. So overall, it does work in a very easy, intuitive manner. And again, the only thing I would really say that's an issue here, if you see a person's face in the background but the camera is not detecting it as a face, you're not going to be able to move that prompt. You have to allow the camera to make sure that it does pick up and detect that face. So I know so far it sounds like Nikon's done a great job of this new system, and it is actually very competitive. They have really made good strides in the right direction, but it's not all perfect. And the real issue that we're having is how accurately it actually focuses pinpoint on the pupil. That's where you want the shot to be. And these cameras with this new firmware do a really good job of focusing on eyelashes, for example. It always seems to be just a little bit in front of where you want it to be. Now at distance, that's not a big issue. It actually did a great job of just picking somebody up, standing there. When your subjects get closer, when you want to do those really nice thin depth of field shots, soft backgrounds, and you're up close trying to get the eye, it can be frustrating. I was finding more often than not, it was always just a little bit in front. And here I'm using a 24 to 70 2.8. 
uh, you know, if Nikon starts implementing some portrait lenses for this system, like 85s or 135s with fast apertures, they're really going to have to get the system down pat before that's going to actually deliver the results you want. This is somewhere where Sony does a way better job with their dedicated portrait lenses going right to the pupil. However, this is a great step in the right direction. I think if you're using stop-down lenses for family shoots and you know street photography, this could actually be a really, really nice setup. But if I was still doing close-up portraits with very long telephotos or thin depth of field lenses, I would still go to single point AF the old school way and try to get that focus to land right on the person's eye. Now if you want some extra detailed information about when and where this eye detect is really going to shine, check out Rishi Sanyal's article on deepyearview.com. It covers everything in excellent detail. Last thing I want to mention, this new firmware actually vastly improves the Z6 and Z7's focusing capabilities in lower light situations. We always had a complaint with that early on and this firmware has addressed a lot of those issues. So if you have a Z6 or Z7, download this firmware and do it already if you haven't because it does make some really nice differences. As usual, thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget Twitter, Instagram, subscribe. Please let us know your comments below and on deepreview.com. Thanks so much for joining us. So back to 24P next week. You know it.